Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this free live session exclusively brought to you by Talent Sprint. And uh, first and foremost, I want to congratulate all of you who've reached this phase three stage in your SBIPO uh, exam, right? Uh, your hard work has paid off and uh, you've cleared phase one and phase two. So congratulations. So now there's no turning back. You just need to go all out and uh, ensure you clear this phase as well, right? And that's why we've stepped up and uh, help, uh, are here to help you do just that. So I'm sure most of you are aware that phase three has two parts to it. One is the group exercise and the other one is the interview, right? Group exercise is for about 20 marks and the interviews for about 30 marks, so that's a total of 50 marks. So we've, we've spent considerable time, uh, you know, focusing on interview tips. I mean, there are a lot of tips for you available online, which you can browse. And we've also taken some earlier sessions as well. So I thought for today's session, we'll spend some time on the group exercise, right? So who's here with us this evening? Okay, let me acknowledge them first. Hold on. So I have uh, Shubham, Varshu, Nilesh, Gunjan, Saumya, okay? And uh, as usual, we have our silent spectators as well, which is fine. I'm so glad all of you could take time and make it for the session this evening. So the agenda for today is I'm going to be sharing five tips, right? to make sure that you stand out in the group exercise. Again, uh, you would have gone through some uh, example uh, group discussions or you know you might be aware of some do's and don'ts when it comes to group discussions. So, but I wanted to spend some time on uh, certain specific uh, you know, points and I want this to be as interactive as possible. So, uh, you know, please give your inputs as well. Let's make this interactive. Um, okay, some more people joining. Vishnu, Ashish, Rahul, Sandeep. Welcome, welcome. Okay, let me just uh, hold on one second. Just want to make sure I don't miss out on anybody. I know. Uh, so that's why this session is there, no, Samya to help you get stronger in your GD. So um, before we get started, I'm hoping um, most of your questions, if not all of your questions, will get answered in the process of me, uh, you know, completing, going through the presentation. If not, of course, you can post your questions towards the end of the session, and then we'll uh, discuss it. Yeah, hi, Gazelle, Dibakar, Pratapa. All right, great. So um, how many of you have already been a part of a group exercise? Just let me know. I'm sure you've gone through that experience. And also let me know if this is going to be your first experience, right? I've never been a part of a group exercise. This will be my first. So I really need some help. OK, and also, quickly wanted to tell you, this is just like a, uh, what do I say, a little seed, right? The whole tree and the branches and everything is available uh, because we do have interview guidance uh, course available for you. So those of you who've cleared your SBIPO mains can avail that free access uh, to this particular course, right? Hi, Jakula and Sharanya and Saumya and Shaitanya and Srinu and Sur Suraj. Okay, great. So let's get started. Um, so we look at it and, and then we'll, uh, you know, I'm going to ask you questions. Okay, so Varshu says this is her first attempt. Okay. Okay. So Samya says, okay, I, I've, I've been able to crack the GD, but not the interview. Okay. So let me know, anybody else also, so we can. Okay, so let's get started. You can continue to post 
uh, if you've been a part of GD or this is your first attempt. Okay, so Sai says, I've attended GD previously, but not an SBIPO. Okay, so we look at, of course, we look at some stuff, okay. So, Just give me a minute. Sorry about that guy, uh, sorry about that guys. Are you able to see the screen? Okay, one of the first tips that we have is expand general knowledge and general awareness, okay? General knowledge and general awareness. So uh, let's quickly, I wanted to spend some time. Uh, what is your understanding of general knowledge and general awareness? There's a difference, right? So we're gonna expand on that, Samya and Ujwal, giving you topics as well. So general knowledge is more about facts on various subjects, right? Facts on various subjects, that's general knowledge for you. So coral reefs in India, you know, where where is it found? It's in Rameshwar, that's a fact, that's general knowledge. Or if I say entomology is the study of what? Insects, that's a fact, general knowledge. All right, certain terminologies, what does it stand for? Right, those are all facts, general knowledge. General awareness, uh, if I say general awareness, okay, how about yesterday? Anybody knows what yesterday was important for? Any guesses? Yesterday was what, July 11th, right? July 11th, what is July 11th famous for? Anybody? Sound problem is it? Hold on one second, let me check. Can you check now? Can you check now? Can you can you confirm if you're able to hear me now? Can all of you confirm if you're able to hear me clearly? If uh, two or three of you tell me, yes, we can hear you clearly, I'll proceed. Yes, yes, okay, you can hear me clearly, right? Okay, perfect. Uh, SRV, you'll be able to hear me in a minute. Okay, that's correct. So I got a lot of answers. Yesterday was actually World Population Day, right? So every year on July 11th, World Population Day is celebrated. So one of the current affairs question can be, what's the theme for 2017? 
What's the theme for 2017? Anybody knows? The theme for 2017 on World Population Day is family planning. Okay, so that's a current affairs question. Or uh, Mangesh Tendulkar, he was a renowned cartoonist. He passed away recently, right? Which state does he hail from? Which state that does Mangesh Tendulkar, who's a cartoonist, which state does he hail from? Okay, thank you for confirming. Uh, now that you guys are able to hear me clearly answer my question. Maharashtra, I'm getting your chat uh, options a little late. Okay, he hails from Maharashtra. Basically, uh, Tendulkar, he was famous for, his cartoons were famous for, he used to, uh, his cartoons revolved around government offices and traffic signals. You know, he used a lot of satire in his cartoons. Witty, witty guy, sarcastic, right, Maharashtra. So that's a current, so you understand the difference between general knowledge and current affairs, right? So you need to expand your knowledge on both. Why? You can use facts and current happenings in your pointers for discussion within the group exercise. Right? So uh, also look at what are the current topics. Right? Right now, what can be an issue that can be thrown as a topic in a group exercise? About GST. Right? Who's, who's been appointed as the new director general for goods and service uh, tax intelligence? Anybody? That's again a current affairs. Anybody knows? In fact, I think these there are these daily quizzes that you can take. It's available online. Current affairs daily quiz. Oh, by the way, nobody answered my question. I'm, I'm waiting, I'll wait. Yes. So I asked a question, who is the new Director General for Goods and Service Tax Intelligence? I'm still waiting for an answer. Huh? <laughs> Modi ji, huh? No. Nobody knows, huh? So which means you guys really need to expand on your uh, general knowledge and current affairs. Wrong, Samia, yes. No, wrong. It's Dr. John Joseph. He's a 1983 batch officer of IRS. I mean, right now it's R.K. Mahajan, but John Joseph will be taking up that, you know, soon. So what I'm trying to say is you need to expand your knowledge on uh, current affairs and general knowledge. Now, uh, what are some of the topics that I can look at, right? So, yes, but what topics will I be asked? That was one of the questions, right? So let's look at a couple of areas that you can spread out and acquire knowledge or information on, yeah? So the first uh, one is, like I said, we spoke about GST, right? That's what is current news, one of the current news, I would say. So goods and service tax, acquire uh, information on all of this. Uh, things like, you know, what's the objective of GST? Uh, what's the game plan? You know, what products or goods is applic applicable under GST? What are the rates, right? What taxes are GST trying to replace? What is the impact of GST? So these are all the pointers that you need to quickly acquire information on, right? So anything around this. Or um, another, another thing is you might also get any topic around, you know, what are the, uh, this is with respect to current, right? Current news, things in uh, currently happening. So you might get uh, some topic around uh, technological transformation in the banking sector. Right, so what are all the changes that are happening? 
on the technology front in the banking sector. So you need to acquire information on that. So uh, cloud computing, right? You can even quote examples. Uh, recently, ICICI deployed uh, some software robots, right? So basically, the objective of that was they reduce customer response time. That was the objective of those. So basically, these robots kind of perform the daily transactions. Over 10 lakh transactions they were able to perform, and as a result of that, it improved operational efficiency. It reduces, uh, it reduced customer response time. So you can, you need to be able to have some facts or knowledge to be able to contribute effectively for a topic around technological transformation in the banking sector, right? So you need to read up a lot. Yeah. So you can also contribute. What do you, what do you think are the current topics that you might get? Uh, you know, a, a topic on. So think, think like that. Sports, right? Sports is another topic that you can acquire some knowledge or information on. So uh, you might get a topic like, it can be a random topic, right? Uh, let's say, you know, cricket as a national obsession is a detriment to other sports. Right? That can be one topic. So read up as much as possible. Education. You might get a topic on, around this. You know, e-learning, a substitute for classroom learning. The fact that all of you are here, right? Trying to learn something, gain knowledge, right? You're learning. So this is a medium that we're using. So is e-learning substituting classroom learning? That could be a topic, right? Something around politics. Value-based politics. What India needs is a dictatorship. Exactly, Saumya, politics, right? Uh, is it that India needs a dictatorship? Is that how it's going to work? You know, democracy is actually not working for us. It's causing a lot of confusion. You might get a topic around that. Religion should not be mixed with politics, right? And you can get a random creative topic. Like, uh, for example, you know, in today's world, Everything is uncertain except death and taxes. What do, you, what do you talk about that, right? You have to think out of the box. You have to be able to personalize it. You know, how is this affecting you personally? Right, there are some suggestions your friends are giving in terms of books that you can read up on. But we're looking at various topics that you need to expand your knowledge on to be able to contribute effectively in a group exercise, right? Management. MBA is highly overrated in India. That can be a topic. What do, you, what do you talk about that, right? Or anything related to social networking sites. You know, what, how does this influence the public and the youth, so social networking sites? So this is a topic, again, you know, probably you might be able to relate more because you have more information. You are involved as a consumer, very actively involved. Right? So something that you can contribute, but still, you need to be able to present your points and articulate your ideas in a manner that is logical. Right? Economics and business, that's another thing that you will have to be uh, read upon. Privatization, advertising, there are so many topics that fall under economics and business. So pretty much, right, these are some of the topics that you can or fields that you can expand your knowledge on. So that's, this is something that you, this is your base, right? Because yes, some really right, nice uh, topics that your friends are giving you, entrepreneurship versus manage, management ship. Okay? So keep this in mind. We're going to move on to tip two. You ready? That's a nice one, Abhishek. Tip two, you need to think like a leader. So if you need to think like a leader, my question to you is, uh, what are some of the things that you can do in the group exercise to display that you have a leadership quality in you? Some of you have been a part of, like Saumya, or I think someone else said that you've attended three or four group exercises, right? So 
I'm hoping you've displayed or you've thought like a leader in the group exercises. So let me hear some pointers from you guys before I share mine. What are some of the things that you can do in a group discussion to ensure that you're thinking like a leader? Okay, confidence, yes. What else? Charan says confidence. I'll wait for four or five more. Smartness, okay. Fluency, all right. Language, okay. Always stay positive. Believe in change, uh huh, okay. Give everyone a chance, okay, Shashank. Perfection, perfection cannot be attained by anybody, but you can try. Appreciating valid points, highlighting that point, okay. Good, good one, Ashish. Stock of, like, organizing your thoughts, is that what you're saying? Adapt to the changes happening, Gazal, okay. Listening and speaking ability, Deepali, yes. Allowing someone to talk. Yeah, somebody mentioned that earlier, Charan. Abhishek is saying compassionate. Okay, that's a big word. Have command on given topic. Yes, absolutely. Managing, managing work pressure? Really? As in, are you saying if there are any difficult situations that crop up during the group exercise to be able to manage that? Okay, so let's look at a couple of things that I have put out, right? We're looking at how do you think like a leader, right, in a group exercise? So that's, that's, that's what we're focusing on. So all that you've mentioned, yes, there are, those are all the pointers. But let's quickly look at what we have, OK? Facilitate, right? That's one thing. So when I say facilitate, one of you had mentioned uh, your ability to allow other people to talk. But facilitate, what I wanted to highlight is, see, leadership is not just about initiating the discussion. Somebody said, you know, you start off or you conclude. It's not about initiating the discussion or summarizing the discussion. But facilitate is where you suggest a path on which the group can continue the discussion, right? So basically, you're somebody who is able to um, give some direction for the members in the group exercise, right? So you need to be able to do that. So facilitating is I am helping or steering the discussion to go in a particular way by either suggesting or giving my opinions, right? That's what facilitate is. Next, you create opportunities for others. Somebody mentioned that. It's a very, very lead, uh, you know, it stands out, that particular leadership trait. A good leader is one who allows others to express their views and channels the discussion to a probable decision or conclusion on the given topic, right? So you need to create opportunities for others. You need to let others speak. Throw out ideas. Now, somebody said, hey, you need to have good knowledge base. Yes. How will you throw out ideas? You cannot throw out ideas if you do not have good subject knowledge, right? So basically, you're giving opinions, you're suggesting things, and that will come only with good subject knowledge. Otherwise, you won't be able to do this. And then you track time, right? Think like a leader. If the, if the discussion is going off track, right? Uh, people are stuck on one particular point for a very long time. Or they just completely off track. You know, they are steering away from the main issue. You need to bring them back on track, right? That's a good leadership trait. Or also in terms of bringing it to a consensus, right? Letting them know, hey, you know what? We've almost come to the end of the discussion. I think it's time for one of you to summarize, right? Keeping track of time, letting them know we're running out of time. This is the time that is allotted to us. We need to move on, right? So that's another thing. So four things, think like a leader. We're going to spend some time on specific skills that you will need to display. That's our next tip. But if I have to think like a leader, I need to have the ability to facilitate. For that, I need to be able to listen and uh, steer conversation accordingly. I need to appreciate others' points, allow others to speak, 
I need to be able to give some ideas and suggestions, which means I have to have good subject knowledge, which is your first tip. Expand on general awareness and general knowledge. And the fourth one is track time. Okay. Now, let's move on to tip three. Display specific skills. Now, um, I'm going to give you about 30 seconds. Think of skills that you are being evaluated on in a group discussion, in a group exercise. What specific skills are you being evaluated on in a group discussion? Deepak, you want to refresh at your end? What are the specific skills? I'll give you, I'll give you two pointers. One is um, the I'm sure nobody will tell this skill. One skill is content building. Okay, your ability to build on content. Meaning, uh, most of us have this, uh, you know, we've memorized some points based on whatever topic uh, or some knowledge on one particular subject. So when you, had, when you have the chance, you speak everything that you know about that topic, right? That's not the way to go. You wait listen to what other people are saying try and build on that content right so your ability to analyze and then logically present your points so that's content building throughout the course of the group exercise throughout the course of the group discussion right so some of you are saying so content building i have mentioned content building some of you are saying communication confidence uh, we're talking about skills body language is not a skill body language is a behavior that you will display in the group discussion, right? Other than communication, I don't see anything else. So let's look at what are the specific skills that you are evaluated on and that you should display, OK? Team player, right? You need to be in a position. How you behave and interact with the group is very important. So because you're, you're dealing with a wide range of people, there are different people in the group exercise. You don't know them. This is the first time you're interacting with them. But still, you should display that, hey, we're still a team. Good point, Sai. We're still a team, and I know how to work with you guys. Eye contact is uh, it's, it's body language. So learn to disagree politely. You know, If you're disagreeing with somebody, learn to disagree politely. Again, team player, one point that was discussed earlier was to show appreciation for good points made by others. Correct? Uh, be assertive. How open-minded you are, right? That's the next one. Be assertive. There are only uh, two words uh, when you think of assertive. One is the right attitude. The second one is confidence, right? You, have to, you need to have the right attitude and you need to be confident. That's when you will be assertive. You're very, very strong and clear in the points that you're trying to present in the group discussion. Again, for that, you need to know what you're talking about. You, as soon as a topic is given to you, you should know, okay, I've read up on this. I have some information. This is how I will present it. I will wait for the right opportunity. I'll, I'll listen to what others are saying and then I will present it in this perspective or in this angle. Right? Let me use this point here or let me hear what others also have to say, right? So be assertive. Logical analysis, we, we spoke about this. We need an in-depth understanding of various is issues, as well as the ability to analyze the topic and build arguments. So you really, really need to pay attention to what others are saying. Creativity, right? You need to think out of the box. So let's say a given topic is there. Some of them are leaning for it. Some of them are leaning against it. You can be completely different and take a neutral stand, right? So think out of the box. Think from a different angle on the same topic. Try and see how you can stand out from the rest of them in the group. Content building, that's what we discussed first. I'll, I'll, I'll mention that, Samya. Just give me a minute. So content is a combination of knowledge and the ability to create 
coherent logical arguments based on on the basis of that knowledge right so merely memorizing facts is pointless i mentioned that right don't say everything in one shot listen interpret understand analyze organize your thought flow and then you discuss leadership we already saw this you know it's a very responsible attitude actually leadership because you're you're trying to gain people's trust and confidence the ability to cope with stressful situations you need to have good organization skills you need to be willing to listen to others discuss various points of view right do not take strong points in the beginning itself try and analyze the pros and cons of a situation yeah and listening that's a very very key skill actually if you ask me in a group exercise because communication is a two way process right the role of the listener is critical so the the listener has his own interpretation of what you say unless you listen to him or her you cannot figure out whether he or she has understood you and unless you listen the points you make may not fit with the points made by others okay we moving on to our third tip which is communication use the right language now when i say communication use the right language we're going to spend some time on uh, some useful phrases that you can use for specific um, uh, what can i say pointers in the group uh, discussion right shashank you want to refresh your side maybe okay communication is everything right uh, first of all you you need to use language that everyone can understand just because you know a lot of uh you know uh, what do i say good vocabulary you can't use all complex complicated words people can't understand you what's the point of you even putting across your point so use language that everybody can understand right speak clearly speak concisely be consistent in what you say uh don't try and go at a length so one of you asked me whenever i speak how long should i speak for you can speak uh for 30 seconds you can speak for a minute you just can't speak for 3 minutes at a stretch right because the group uh discussion itself will be only for about uh, you know 8 to 10 minutes so you need to be sensitive to people in the group that they also should contribute respect their time every time you speak it doesn't matter the quantity it's the quality that matters what you say is what matters right not how much you say and always remember it's a discussion it's not about okay i know this much i will say my point and keep quiet you need to you you need to have the ability to build on other people's points as well so for that listening is a part of communication let's look at some useful phrases okay i'm going to share some useful phrases which you can use to make your language and communication more appropriate in a group exercise so one of the first things is if you want to introduce something with an opinion right so use the right phrases hey to begin with or let me begin by saying that or let me open the discussion by saying that you know i wish to strongly assert that or let's say you want to add to someone else's point right so apart from that or besides what a b c said i'd like to add let me also mention that moreover okay stating facts so if you want to if you want to prove a point right you're coming across very strongly and you're saying hey according to xyz is the source from where you have taken the fact right so facts tell us that or facts point out that or if you want to give an opinion right if you ask me this is what i have to say or the way i see it is that or perhaps we can look at it from this perspective right so you're trying to give an opinion by using the right phrases what about if you want to agree with somebody right i totally agree with what abc has just said i strongly support the idea that abc has proposed right or you're disagreeing in fact i would say don't even use the word disagree or you're wrong right don't say things like that just say i'm afraid i don't quite agree with what is being said or i'd like to challenge the idea of what abc has just said right see how nicely you can put it across even if you're disagreeing with somebody 
right? So don't, uh, don't say, hey, you're wrong, or I disagree with what you're saying. No, don't use that words. Politely disagree, right? You don't have to use the word disagree itself. Or if you want to intervene. Now, what's intervene? Everybody knows interrupt, right? Interrupting is wrong. You should not interrupt anybody when they are putting their point across. Intervene. Intervene meaning you wait for the right moment, right? When they pause, excuse me, if I may say something at this point. Hey, please let me point out that. And I'd like to propose a different take on this, right? You wait for the right moment when they pause, intervene and make your point. Do not interrupt. Because when you interrupt, Right? If someone interrupts you, in case you're at the receiving end and you know, you're trying to make a point and somebody interrupted you, let them know, please allow me to finish. I'm not done yet. Or if you may permit me to finish. Right? So which means interrupting is wrong. Intervening is fine. Right? Because nobody's going to give you a chance to speak, right? At the end, uh, in the group exercise, everybody's trying to get the attention of the panel. So nobody's going to say, okay, fine, you, you know what, um, GV, you speak. Saumya, would you like to speak? But if uh, Saumya or GV has been pretty silent throughout the discussion, then yes, someone can say, what can you say? Participants are not speaking. Then you can say, hey, let's allow uh, you know, Saumya and GV to contribute too. We haven't heard from some of the members yet. Has anyone else got anything to contribute, right? So it's not about disturbing Sai, it's about interrupting them. There's a, there's a difference, right? Disturbing is a completely different word and it's not related in this context. So this is where you display leadership skills, right? You're being sensitive to people, you're, uh, you're allowing others to also get a chance to speak. Now, let's say the topic is going off the main issue, right? People are stuck in one particular point or they're talking about something else which is not related to the topic at hand. What can you say? We are deviating from the main issue. We are losing sight of the main point. Let us not stray away from the main issue. Right? I'm afraid we are not moving on, which means we are stuck in that one point. Let's move on. I suppose we have been talking only about so this, 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 this. Why don't we address this? Right? So again, you're displaying leadership skills and not only that you're also displaying listening skills because unless you listen you're not being you're not going to be able to identify that people are talking about the same thing for a very long time or people are going off track right so everything is tied in here first of all you have to have good subject knowledge to identify that somebody is not um, is going off track right things like that how do you conclude? What phrases can you use for conclusion? I'm afraid we've run out of time. I suppose one of us should just summarize. I think we need to sum up, right? Use the right phrases so that your communication is apt and correct. Are you following? So, so Ashish says, uh, Please, ma'am, tell me what all things I should not use while agreeing or disagreeing the points of others. Like I said, um, Ashish, you avoid saying, you know, I disagree with you or you're wrong. Can you prove it? Right? What facts do you have to support your statement? Right? Don't be aggressive. Be assertive. Be supportive. You can always tell them if you feel that the point that they are giving is incorrect, or wrong then you should be in a position to validate that so if you have some facts to support uh, you know what saying that okay what you said is incorrect what you can say is uh, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that's not quite right because you know as per this 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 source this is what the fact is right so try and always try to disagree politely if you agree you say you agree even if you want to appreciate somebody's points right you can always say, uh, that's a valid point. Or, uh, you know, now that's a good point. And I'd like to add to that, right? So use that as an opportunity to intervene and put your point across. Don't wait for a chance because nobody's going to give it on your plate. See, the problem is, Sai, people always think that, um, you know, if I summarize, I will get some brownie points because I'm displaying leadership skills. Not necessarily. 
because I have seen a lot of group discussions where one person will summarize, then another person will summarize after that, and sometimes even another person will summarize on the summarization, right? Because everybody is trying to get the panel's attention by summarizing, which you shouldn't do. Avoid that. Ideally, only one person should summarize, but what happens, this, there is a tendency for this to happen. So what you can do is, if that is the case, right, if one of them finish summarizing, and if you feel that summarization was incomplete, or that person left out some valid points from the discussion that you've had, then you can add to it, right? And you need to communicate that very clearly in the group discussion, not to take away from so and so, not to take away from what Ashish just summarized, but I feel we missed out this and then you add whatever points, valid points, right? So there, you are displaying, uh, again, leadership skills, listening skills, your ability to bring together consensus. And within the time frame that is allotted, very rarely that you will come to a consensus, right? But you can do a part consensus summary, right? You can partially uh, conclude based on whatever the discussion pointers are. You don't have to come to a complete agreement because sometimes that cannot that may not happen given the time frame that you have so keep that in mind okay the we've come to the last tip which is no gd etiquette to apply etiquette is what some things that uh, you just need to follow you just need to do right these are certain things that are required from your end to apply like for example if I say uh, if I say presentation etiquette right if you're presenting something and if I say do you know certain presentation etiquette what is presentation etiquette if I'm creating a PowerPoint slide PowerPoint presentation right I need to make sure that uh, the the font size on the slide is visible even to the last person sitting I need to use the right font size right I need to make sure I don't have paragraphs on my slide. I need to have proper bullet points. And even if I want to add visuals, it should really serve the purpose. I should not add visuals just for the sake of adding visuals, right? So there are certain etiquettes that you need to follow. Color combinations, right, for the PowerPoint. So that's certain things when it comes to presentation etiquette, right, in terms of delivery. Don't read from the screen. If you have a, if you have a, some notes that you're carrying, don't read from the notes directly. Have some, you know, little cards with pointers helping you in your presentation, right? Don't stand with your back to the audience. These are all some basic etiquette. So likewise, in group exercise, in a GD also, there's some etiquette that you need to follow. What is that? Let's look at it. Listen and discuss various points of view, which means what? Do not take strong views in the beginning itself. Try and analyze the pros and cons first. See how the discussion goes. And then you can meaningfully contribute, right? So this is something that you have to, have to do and follow. You cannot just say what you have to say and keep quiet for the rest of the discussion. Another thing that we already had mentioned in one of the skills, uh, learn to disagree politely, right? Like I said, in fact, it is far better to put forward your point of view without specifically saying, I disagree or you're wrong. Show appreciation for good points, yes. You can make a positive contribution by agreeing to an expanding an argument made by someone else, right? We discussed this, that's a valid point. And watch your body language. Very, very important. You know, body language says a lot about you. Your gestures and mannerisms are more likely to reflect your attitude than what you say. Right? Um, so what I mean is, be natural. Be yourself. Don't act like a robot. If somebody says something funny, react. Laugh. Right? Don't raise your voice. Don't point fingers. Right? Don't get aggressive. If somebody objects to what you say, don't get aggressive. Uh, the whole thing is, you know, be objective. Don't take the discussion personally, right? So these are certain things uh, that you need to keep in mind. Uh, with respect to body language, you know, it's a group exercise, it's a group discussion. So look at your members, group 
people in the group and talk. Don't keep looking at the panel. Right? They will evaluate you. You don't have to keep looking at them and checking with them if you're doing right or wrong. You're discussing with the group, so maintain eye contact with the group members. Right? So, and um, another thing that I've noticed is, I think this stems from because either you don't have enough knowledge on the topic or you're very conscious and you're insecure because I've seen people in the group discussion murmur and speak under their breath. I don't understand the whole point of that. If, you're, if you are given an opportunity to say something and put your point across, you should speak up, right? Isn't the whole objective of participating in a group discussion is for the members and the panel to hear what you're saying. So how can you just murmur? It doesn't serve the purpose. So these are some things that you need to keep in mind when it comes to body language. So the, just to summarize everything, you know, the basic mantra that you'll have to keep displaying in a GD is this. Listen, interpret, understand what the other person is saying, what is their point saying, so that you can analyze and see how you can also add to that point or have a different take or opinion on that point, organize your thought flow, and then you present your point, and then you discuss, right? So it boils down to this. If, you, if it is a group exercise, if it is a group discussion, then you need to listen. Only if you listen will you be able to understand. Only if you understand, you will be able to analyze. Only if you analyze, you will be able to organize your thoughts clearly. And then you can contribute effectively to the discussion by discussing. Right? And the very important thing, I like this quote by uh, Fielding H. Yours. It says, the will to win is worthless if you do not have the will to prepare. So what I'm basically saying is, you can acquire a lot of, uh, you can acquire a lot of knowledge on various topics. You can know, okay, these are the skills that I need to display. This is how I should behave. I know some phrases that I can use if I want to give my opinion or start a particular point. Right? You know all that. But if you don't get into some sort of a practice group and have some practice, it's going to be difficult, right? Theory is one. Practical is where the problem is, right? Just the transfer of those skills in a real time situation is where the challenge is for most of us. So try and see if you can get into some groups. Uh, you know, it could just be uh, with your friends itself, you know, just your friend circle. Uh, try and identify somebody who can observe and evaluate and give feedback to you guys. Take it seriously. Because without practice, you will not know how you are reacting in certain situations, you know. So as much as possible, try and see if you can have some sort of a, you know, practice group, group practice basically. As much as possible, I would say. Um, so, I'll leave it open. If you guys have any questions, I can answer questions. We've, we've, that was the end of the presentation. If you have any questions, I would like to take that up. So, Sanghi says, I stammer a lot. Okay. Stammering problem, they cannot crack GD map. Um, I wouldn't say that. You know, you can establish that fact beforehand, before you get started. Um, you can establish that fact, you know, you can always say, um, I would like to mention that I do have a little bit of stammering problem, so please be patient with me while I put my point across, right? If you can establish the fact that so people will be more sensitive to you, so they will give you that time that you need, right? So that's one way. Communication is the best thing in a group exercise. If you have a problem, mention that. Something as uh, critical as stammering needs to be communicated, right? You can't say, oh, I have a problem, I'm nervous. That's not the right thing to say. But if you have a stammering problem, yes, you should mention that. So people will be more sensitive towards you.
Yeah, what was it? Uh, so have, that was Sangi and Saumya's question. I've answered that. So Ashish says, ma'am, what should I do when I'm getting dominated or, or not getting any chance of speaking my points? Okay. Um, yes, this is a very usual thing to happen because everybody is trying to, uh, you know, make an impression in the GD, right? So like I said, nobody is going to give you a chance to speak unless you've been silent throughout and somebody has identified that and called out your name. But like I said, you will have to keep observing and paying close attention to find that right spot to intervene, right? You'll have to wait for that pause to intervene. Uh, so which means you'll have to closely pay attention to the group exercise. You can't just sit back and say, okay, you know what? This person is going on and on and on. I don't know when he or she will stop. That's not the attitude that you need to have. You need to, because every nobody can speak at length, right? In a sentence, there will be some pauses. You'll just have to find the right pause. When some, and that too, that's another thing. You'll have to wait for somebody to complete a thought. What I'm trying to, I haven't completed the thought, right? So you can't intervene there just because I paused. Doesn't make sense. Let me complete that thought. So what I'm trying to establish here is we've been discussing this and this is what I feel. They've completed the thought, they will pause. Intervene then. Yeah? Um, see, um, it's very, very, uh, so Samia is saying, how can I control nervousness? Everybody is very natural to feel nervous, first of all, right? Uh, at the end of the day, it is, it is a, it is an interview round and you are being evaluated and you have been, uh, evaluated on certain parameters, which means you're already under pressure for displaying those specific skills. Right? And on top of it, you don't know any of your group members. You may not know them. They might be completely new and different. And you still have to interact with them and display team skills. I mean, team player, right? team skills and other skills. You will just have to channelize your nervous energy into positive energy by reflecting on the fact that you've come to this stage and you're here and you'll have to give it your best shot. You have taken time to prepare and you're just going to translate whatever knowledge you have on whatever topic, right? I've, I've, I've known a lot of uh, students who played very smart, right? Even if they do not have enough information on the topic, one of you asked, right? That was your question. What if I don't know the topic at all? What do I do? You really can't do much. But what you can do is, if you listen carefully to what others are contributing, you can take from that and build on it, right? Try and personalize it. Take a point, pick a point from someone, try and personalize it, even if you don't have information. That's why, when you, especially when you don't know the topic or you don't have enough information on the topic, it's important that you listen even more. So you can take and build on someone else's point. You can do that as well. And try and figure out what are the other skills that you can display, right? If you see somebody who's not spoken at all, right? Intervene and say, you know what, I think so-and-so has not contributed at all, let's give them an opportunity to say something, right? Uh, we're discussing how to, what skills that you need to display, what topics that you need to focus on for a group exercise. Manoj, I'm assuming you know the title of the session, five tips to make the right impression in a group discussion. So we're discussing pointers for that. Um, okay, to address Monica's question, Monica asks, is it okay to begin a GD with a question? Now, question is just one of the uh, examples you can use to initiate a group discussion. There are so many things that you can do, right? You can throw a question, you can start with a quote, like you said. Uh, you can bring in some facts or statistics. You can even start with a story. Right? There are so many different initiation techniques that you can use in a group discussion. Right? You can throw in a problem and the solution can be the, you can steer the group for the solution to that problem. Right? That itself can be your discussion based on what the topic is. So are you following? Uh, because I don't think you should plan to dominate others in a group discussion. That's not a very good trait to display. Right? So 
I wouldn't say, I wouldn't give pointers for that. But what you can do is, see, um, you don't have to uh, dominate anybody just by the fact of when you open your mouth and what you say, right? If there's solid content and there's quality in what you're saying, right? Uh, your knowledge on that specific topic, if that comes through itself, you will automatically stand out from the rest of the crowd, right? If you display certain specific skills at the right time, automatically you will stand out, right? So I wouldn't use the word dominate. Dominate, it's not, dominate is not the right word, if you ask me. Yes, there should be, Samya, to answer your question. Uh, I don't know, I mean, any natural person cannot speak non-stop without a pause. They have to pause somewhere. Okay. It could be a very aggressive situation, but at that time, I think you will just have to uh, figure out a way in which you can, you know, what can I say? I've seen, I've known a lot of people who even stand up and say, I think uh, what we're doing right here is getting aggressive or we getting very argumentative. Let's get back to the topic and let me, let me uh, summarize what's been happening so far, right? So this person has created an opportunity for himself or herself using that situation, right? Even though people are all talking at the same time, you know, you probably have to get a little dramatic or think creative out of the box. Mm, that's what I said, Ashish. You will just have to figure out a way. You know, be think out of the box. It is possible for that to happen. Yes, it's it's a GD. Everybody will talk. What if I use fillers? Just make sure it's not, there's not too many fillers, right? It's very, it's very irritating, you know, um, uh, when um, I, uh, what I'm trying to say is, um, you know, actually, you know how irritating that is? It is, right? It's very annoying. When you, when you can't say a sentence completely and use a lot of fillers, it just takes away from what is it that you're trying to say? People already lose interest, they tune off. Right, they immediately tune off. So what if I use fillers? Try not to. Why would you want to? You, you follow what I'm saying? Prince, check the title, right? beneath the video. Suggestions for what, Samya? So like I said, um, take time, go back, uh, you know, go through some of the pointers, but most importantly, spend time on tip one which is expanding your knowledge on various topics and subjects, right? Without which you won't have content to speak. That's one of the most challenging things for a lot of us, right? Given a topic, I have no clue what to say on this topic because I have no idea. I haven't read up, I know nothing about this topic. So don't put yourself in a situation like that. Try and, I've shared some uh, topics with you initially, right? And I've also shared some sectors or subjects that you can read up on. So do that. When we, when we looked at um, topics that you need to, just go back. I've shared some topics there itself. I think we're in paying attention. So look it up. And again, reiterating the fact that uh, we do have specific guidance for you know, interviews, interview guidance, courses available. It's, you can log on, I think, 
there was information provided to you on the chat itself. Right? You just have to click on the link below and you will get free access to interview and GD preparation for SBIPO. Right? Of course, you will have to have cleared SBIPO. Only those people can avail this free access. Okay? So, I hope uh, you, know, you will follow what I've shared as tips and apply them. Like I said, try and get into practice uh, groups so you can transfer all these all this knowledge and practice on that right all the very best we really are hoping you know you would use these apply these and really do well in phase three and come back and tell us that you have joined in this bank right all the best again from talent sprint to all of you out there and uh, we will see you guys with another interesting session uh, next week, Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Okay, have a nice rest of the week. Take care.